It's an age-old question. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Well, you could always take the NRQW train down to 57th Street, but we're talking about the other way. We're talking about practicing. Coming up today on The Simmer. <laughs> Hi and welcome to The Simmer, I'm your host Michael Thurston. You know, discipline practicing could be the greatest trait of all musicians and Dennis Anderson knows that trait well. For over 35 years, Dennis has been a prominent freelance musician and educator. He's performed with top ensembles and performers from all over the world and has been an orchestra member in dozens of Broadway productions. So when Dennis takes the time to practice, he takes that time seriously. I recently spent a whole afternoon with Dennis discussing practicing. Dennis is a professional musician who's played for decades. How much time do you spend on your horn daily? I don't really think that it's about quantity of time. I think it's about quality because, at least for me, I have 14 instruments that I need to maintain. So what I try to do is budget a period of time during the day that I can put in so much so many hours or minutes or whatever it is. Now when I was a young student, I could spend six hours straight without a break. If a student is motivated and inspired, the sky's the limit as far as how much time they want to spend. We are really athletes in a way. Um, we're using all parts of our mind, body, and spirit when we're playing. Stretching is extremely important. I do have to stretch my arms and my hands the first thing I, I get out of bed. So in the, in the morning when you first pick up the horn, what are some of your favorite exercises or etudes? What are some of the things that you do the first time you pick up the horn in the day? Well, the first thing I do is I, I check the instrument and I make sure there are not any leaks. I mean... I can tell from experience that, you know, if a, if a pad is sticking, if the keys are noisy in the winter, I look for cracks. So do you have any favorite tips or exercises that you use for working on technique or working on tone? I, I don't think it can be that isolated. It's all combined into one unit. It's not one thing or the other. You don't work on tone or just articulation or just scales. It all comes together. One is incomplete without the other. So, uh, I mean, for advanced students, um, there are a number of method books that I've used that have been helpful for me. One is the Rose Studies. Others include the Behrman, Closse, Lazarus, Langinus. Also, the Jean Jean Etudes are not only excellent for technique, but also beauty of tones. Um, sometimes I reverse like a, um, a retrograde or a mirror, for example. And technique uh, is articulation. Um, Where is the reed in my mouth in, in, in relation to, to my tongue, for example? How does it set in there? How far in or out is the mouthpiece? in this case, the clarinet. The tongue needs to bounce in the, against the reed. It can't be locked. So I recommend the syllable, duh. Duh it. Duh 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 duh. Duh duh. Not ta 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 ta. See what happens? Ta 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 ta. Da 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 da. If I really want to get fancy, I can develop a double tongue. Da da da. Da 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 da. Or, or reverse it. All of these things come into play. That, that's part of tone and technique. And I think tone also comes by just playing and listening. Listening is a very important key for students to remember who's your favorite player, who, whose recordings do you like, um, who are the masters on their instruments. You, you know, your unique in, in tone will evolve from within. It, it's your own individual thing. Your tone is not going to sound like anybody else's and vice versa. But the tones that are the most popular and sought after are the ones who 
have adopted a certain school of playing and understanding of what tone is and how the air works and how the tongue works and then they just incorporate it into this magical moment where it all happens at the same time. So Dennis, when you began a new piece of music, do you have any favorite tips or techniques you use for trying to get some of the more difficult phrases or passages under your fingers? Yeah, it's really simple. Just slow everything down to a snail's pace. And the most important thing is not to be intimidated by it because there's no audition. There's no one over your shoulder mentoring or correcting what you're doing in your own room. I want to find out what key I'm in. Am I fluent in that key? If it's a difficult key, what do I need to do? Every key should uh, not should really feel the same, but really, in truth, it doesn't. Some are more difficult. Mm. Are there alternate fingerings I could use? Are there books I can consult to find them, make my job easier? Uh, what's the tempo? I mean, I don't want to be intimidated by a quarter note equals two sixty. It doesn't have to be played that way the first reading. And I need not, you know, over-challenge myself. Um, as I said before, breaking things down, passages into smaller units, playing them in different um, tempi, different articulations. Don't ever put on the tape recorder when you're first learning a piece of music, in my opinion, because it's too scary. What if you don't feel like practicing? Do you ever have to force yourself? Do you recommend that? Or do you just lay off of it for the day? What are your tips on that? If I have a deadline and I need something yesterday or within the next day that demands, let's say I'm playing a solo, which I better have spent more than just a day on, I need to force myself to practice. Uh, however, c continuing to hammer out a passage um, can cause undue fatigue and frustration. You spoke about maintaining the, the stuff you've learned as a horn player over decades of experience. Do you have any advice for younger musicians, say a new music major, as to how many hours a day they should spend with their instrument in the practice rooms? Well, before I answer that, I will say that we never stop learning no matter we're maintaining or not. It's just the pace with which we get to the next uh, uh, signpost. Mm -hmm. But I think that scales are important, but they're only one component of the complete picture. Again, it's, it's one thing. Well, I can play my scales right, but I don't eat carrots all day long. Well, I played my scales today. Yeah, but maybe you played your scales, but you practiced your staccato. Did you practice your, your legato phrasing? Did you incorporate all that? I try to extend the scales from the lowest note to the highest note within that diatonic minor, major, diminished, augmented, or modal scale. Any projects that you might want to mention that you, you know, want to tell us yeah, about? I'm planning a recital within the next year. So I'm having some, some pieces commissioned. Uh, by a, a good friend and colleague, someone I've known for many years, also served as my uh, orchestration and composition coach. But I would like to make a recording of it, a live recording, and give uh, credit where credit is due. If you want to know more about Dennis Anderson, you can check him out on the website for the New York Saxophone Quartet. Till next time, keep working on respectable musicianship. I'm Michael Thurston for The Simmer.